Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds number 39. So this is where I collect together all the new music that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. I get it from different places like local record stores, online retailers, Amazon, eBay, and more. For this past week, I've got 12 new music finds to go through with you. It breaks down as five new releases, one box set, one catalog album, and five used CDs. But before we dive into all of that, if you are new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with New Music Finds, episode number 39. All right, so kicking things off as we always do, we start with brand new releases that just came out this past Friday on November 12th. I've got five of those to go through with you. I get my new releases typically through Amazon. Unfortunately, just local record stores don't usually carry new releases anymore. Um, and of course, uh, with Amazon, you can get uh, same day delivery too. So that's always a nice thing. First one up, LA Guns Checkered Past 16th studio album by them. Uh, so this one here uh, featuring Phil Lewis, Tracy Guns, that's the version of the band. There are two versions out there of the uh, LA Guns. Uh, we got another version out there of Steve Riley, the drummer, and the bassist, Kelly Nichols. They're doing uh, their thing in 2020. They put out an album, Renegades. But right now we're talking about Phil Lewis and Tracy Guns and this one here, Checkered Past. So um, this is the third album since they've reunited and um, it was recorded remotely uh, you know, during the pandemic and everything like that, which uh, according to Tracy Guns was an interesting thing in and of itself. He found it uh, fascinating to do it that way. I don't know if that had anything to do with the overall style of the album, but the album itself, which has 11 tracks and comes in at 45 minutes, has a lot of different styles on it. It's much more varied than past albums. So maybe recording remotely uh, inspired them to try some new things, do some different things, uh, who knows. But I do find this one very interesting, holds my attention the whole way through. Um, I also think it has a better sound than the last two albums. So um, all good stuff all the way around. I do recommend it. I have done a full review of it and I'll leave a link for it in the description below if you want to check it out. All right, the other brand new release that came out that I was super excited for was this one. It's a brand new Enough's Enough. I know it's a little hard to see there, but it does say Enough's Enough right there. And of course we get our uh, peace sign in it, which is how we know it's called Hard Rock Night. And uh, is their 17th studio album. This one here is an interesting one. It features all Beatles songs or related solo songs on it. So seven Beatles tracks and three solo uh, tracks from the different members. This one here, I particularly like how they worked up the different versions of the tracks themselves. They're not just straight covers. Um, in fact, uh, some of these here just have a very cool classic feel, the way that they've done it, but yet they've made it their own. And um, definitely something that uh, you know can be hard to be done by a lot of bands. Sometimes bands just do straight covers. That's not my thing. I like this hearing enough's enough, but doing some cool covers. And that's what this is. Uh, it's got great tracks. I mean, it opens with Magical Mystery Tour on it. It's got Eleanor Rigby on here. Do a cool version of Helter Skelter. I actually like the um, solo tracks on here, I think, best. You've got John Lennon's Cold Turkey. You've got Paul McCartney's Jet on here. Just some really good stuff like that. So I do recommend it. And uh, Chips Enough is handling the vocals on it. Donnie V is not in the band, but he does a really great job. So definitely recommend it. Done a full review of that. And again, we'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. All right, next new release is Rod Stewart, The Tears of Hercules, 32nd solo album, if you can believe that. Guy's released a ton of albums. Uh, of course, he's 76, so he can do that having uh, been around as long as he has. So the album itself is good, but it's kind of all over the place stylistically. This one's got country, dance, pop, soul, boogie. And so in their own right, I do like the tracks, but because the album is kind of all over the place, it's a little uh, hard to get into and stay with it, in my opinion. There's a lot of standout tracks on it, but you know, just be ready for the different stylistic um, movements from track to track. You kind of never know where you're going to end up, and the mood is kind of all over the place because of that. Um, I really prefer when an album is much more consistent, but he sounds good, the tracks are good, they're just 
a lot of variety on this. And that may appeal to some people, but uh, for me at least, I prefer when it's uh, a little more um, consistent. All right, next one up goes to Dave Gone, The Soul Savers, Imposter. So third studio album by The Soul Savers with Dave Gone being part of them. Fifth album for Dave Gone outside of Depeche Mode. He's got two uh, just standalone solo releases, but uh, this one here is all uh, cover songs on it. So kind of interesting they chose to do that. It's got uh, a couple interesting cover songs on here. We've got A Man Needs a Maid, which is a Neil Young song, and Not Dark Yet, which is a Bob Dylan song. So they made some interesting choices here. The, the songs themselves I find to be a little more of the crooning style than um, the electronica sound that is Depeche Mode. So if you're looking for this to be Depeche Mode, it's not, it is something different, but it's good. It's definitely worth checking out. All right, and then we've got um, a box set here from REM. Uh, this one being New Adventures in Hi-Fi celebrating its uh, 25th anniversary. Originally, the album itself came out in 1996 and was their 10th studio album. But this cool uh, box set here, uh, it's a two disc set and they got the REM down there. Interesting that they don't put any of that on the front cover of it, but it's a clamshell style box that opens like that. This was the hype sticker, not that you can really see it because it's clear, but um, the discs are right on top of this thing. And uh, it's got the album itself, but it's also got a disc of bonus tracks, B-sides, outtakes, things like that. And again, it's got a booklet in it. And then what's cool is that this has um, some postcard releases. They call them postcards, although they're on some pretty flimsy paper to be called uh, postcards, in my opinion. It's just kind of a paper, if you ask me. And then we've got a really big 24-inch square poster in here. There you go, famous one from uh, the first single that they had released at the time. But um, there is a, a even like super deluxe version of this that has a Blu-ray disc that comes with it that's got a documentary on it, but it doesn't come in the box. It comes in one of those eco books. Um, and I wasn't interested in that. I wanted the poster, the postcards, the clamshell box. So I ended up getting uh, just the two CD one. I would have been happy to get the Blu-ray if they had put it in a box, but that's why I've ended up with this one here. So just uh, again, be aware of that. Know which version you're buying and how it's coming because there's different packaging on uh, the different versions. All right, so I've got another new release here, but it's not available to buy on Amazon. At least it says it's currently unavailable. So I had to go directly to the band's website, which Jerry Cantrell, Brighton, third solo album, uh, from the Allison Chains guitarist. Now, it's gonna be hard to see on there, and I'm gonna try and put it in the light and see if any of it will reflect through for you guys, but it is a raised surface uh, with lettering and other things on here, but it's clear, so you can't see them just looking at the cover itself. You only see it when you kind of hold it at an angle and you see the stuff on here, and it's also all over the back of it. Again, I'm just trying to move it a little bit. You can see some of it there, things like that moving through it. So there's some interesting things. They did a really great job on the packaging of this. Not sure why this has not gotten a um, full release, if there's anything in particular why, uh, if it's uh, shipping issues or what. So it was listed as being available on Amazon and then it's not and uh, currently unavailable. So I ordered it directly from Jerry Cantrell's website and I think I got it in about a week. So it's not very long in the shipping if you wanna do the same thing and order it that way. Okay, and then I've got one, what I call a catalog album. It's something that's been out for a while. So it's not a new release. Um, I'm adding it to my collection. I know it'll shock some of you guys that I don't have it in the collection already, but uh, the Beatles, the White Album, and this is the 50th anniversary edition that's a three disc set. So you get the original double album, but then you get all of these great outtakes and things like that. So ninth studio album, as I mentioned, double album, three CD set, you know, what could be better than that? I was on a bit of a um, Beatles kick due to that Enough's Enough over the weekend. And uh, this is one I didn't have in the collection, so I'm adding it now. And sometimes I don't always like to just buy things and put them in the collection at the time. I wanna wait till I'm really in it and then I can savor it. So I'm in the mood for this now. I bought this and I'm looking forward to getting it. You can see it's still in the plastic because it just came right before I got home. So I'm filming this video really quickly 
then I'm going to be diving into that. All right. And so then also, um, I hit my local record store, Academy Records, again. I got five used releases. And just so you guys know, any of you guys that are local, uh, Academy's doing a great thing, uh, buy five, get one free sort of thing. So um, I didn't buy a sixth one in order to get it free, but uh, they are doing that and um, a lot of good stuff to be found in there. And I did film my experiences. I don't know if I'm gonna edit it and put it up or not, but the other video that I did is doing really well. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description for that one too, but uh, I might put a part two up because there's a whole bunch of cool stuff from this latest one. But jumping into it, OMD Crush from 1985, picked this one up here. Uh, this was their sixth studio album at the time, and it was known for moving the band away from their experimental phase into the more radio-friendly phase, and they were doing it trying to gear themselves more towards the U.S. market. So I've always really enjoyed it. The lead track on it, So In Love, is the one that I know. I don't know if that was the big hit or not, but that's the one that I know, so I was glad to be able to find that and pick it up. All right, then I picked up this, uh, Steely Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy, uh, 1973. So second studio album that they did at the time. And um, I didn't know this, but I was just reading up on it. So when uh, David Palmer left after the first album and he was singing lead on that, Donald Fagan took over. So this was the first time Donald Fagan did all the lead vocals on an album was this one here. So kind of interesting and uh, might explain some of why the first album did what it did and the second one didn't really produce any hits on it. But sometimes I like that. I like albums that uh, I can dive into fresh and not really know anything off of. All right, this next one was a cool find. I wasn't expecting this. Mick Taylor, self-titled 1979 solo album, debut solo album, in fact. And of course, he's a former Rolling Stones guitarist who appeared on five of their studio albums between 69 and 74, so only five years with the band. But he did a lot with them. And this album here, I've always kind of wanted to know, know, to know a little more about him. And since he's been popping up on their, um, you know, throughout their various 50th anniversary tour and some other shows like that, he'll show up and play on Midnight Rambler and stuff like that. Um, I've been more interested in him. I wanted to get to know his stuff. So when I found this, I thought, perfect, I'll pick this up. All right, and then I found another cool one here. Steve Miller Band Anthology, 1972 uh, compilation, 16 tracks on it, spanning from 68 to 72. So not my favorite period of him. It's a more bluesy era than what he got into later on, the more famous period of, of his uh, career. But I'm looking forward to diving into this and giving it a real listen, especially with the Mick Taylor and uh, early Rolling Stones and some of that more bluesy era period. Uh, should be a fun, uh, enjoyable evening to, to go through all that. All right, and the reason I'm wearing my ZZ Top Eliminator shirt was that I actually picked up a jewel case edition of Eliminator. Um, so I've obviously I've got it. You can see over there I've got a box set of all the albums, at least from that era. And as uh, the eighth studio album, but I like to have a jewel case edition of it. Those box sets I put away and I can just quickly pull these out. Plus it's just, sometimes it's, you know, having that art, you know, and uh, it's just a little different. I, I know some of you guys agree with me on this. Some of you guys think it's silly, but um, I like having jewel case editions of some of the bigger, more famous albums or what I should maybe say is my favorite albums. And um, sometimes I get them as remastered editions and different things like that. But uh, for now, at least I'm picking it up this way. So there you go. That's my New Music Finds episode number 39, where I went through 12 CDs with you. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, do uh, check the description for links to related videos. In particular, I've done a full review of that new LA Guns and a full review of the new Enough's Enough. Plus, I'm going to leave a link to the Academy Records uh, video that I did of a you know, real record store experience kind of thing. And you can check that out there. And uh, also, don't forget to check back every Wednesday when I do new videos of new music finds and post them for you. All right, everyone, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.